Hi, everybody. I'm Gloria Moraga. This is the Political Woman Podcast. Thanks for being here. Wow. This is a podcast for Tuesday, December 8th. It's late Monday night. And wow, I don't even want to start on what I planned for today until I give you an update on some news. One. Another hurricane is barreling toward Florida and the South. And it's going to be bad. And meantime, Donald Trump is playing politics, saying that the federal government isn't going to help. And they are. They're down helping. So that's going on. Uh, The mayor of Tampa just said on CNN, if you don't evacuate, you're going to die because it's Milton that's coming and it's huge and it's picking up speed. I mean, the only way it's not gonna be as bad is if it moves. So there's that. Supreme Court, this is the first Monday in October and I'm getting ready to, I'm gonna do a live shot on TikTok. So join me there, search for my lives and visit me live on TikTok about the Supreme Court ruling. They ruled on a couple of things. One, Texas has that strict abortion law. It's a killer. It's a killer law. You go into the emergency room in Texas and you're bleeding out from a bad pregnancy The doctors there cannot help you. So women have died or they've lost the ability to have children. What the hell is wrong with us people? Supreme Court, so so Texas passed this law and then the Biden administration challenged it and it went to the Supreme Court because the Biden administration said this violates federal law. Supreme Court just said, rule today, they're not getting involved. They're going to let the ruling stand in Texas. Which brings me to vote. We can't depend on anybody, people, to help us. We are women. Hear us roar. Do we want this for our children? Do we want this for our young people? Men and women. No, we don't. We don't want them to have to live like this. So we have to vote. All right, as promised. Today's podcast is all about Jack Smith and Trump's January 6th indictments. The Supreme Court ruled that Trump has immunity in relation to official conduct in the White House. So Jack Smith went through the indictment on overthrowing the election, and he filed a new document. That document was, a lot of it was redacted, so it's covered up. A lot of it wasn't, and that was released last week. So I'm going to read. Uh, first, here's a little bit of background, and I'm reading this from PBS. Quote, Donald Trump laid the background to overturn the 2020 election, even before he lost, knowingly pushed false claims of voter fraud and resorted to crimes in his failed bid to cling to power. According to a newly unsealed court filing from prosecutors that offers new evidence from the landmark criminal case against the former president. The filing by special counsel Jack Smith's team offers the most comprehensive view to date of what prosecutors intended to prove if the case charging Trump with conspiring to overturn the election reaches trial. So, you know, everyone's complaining. This is just me talking now. Everyone's complaining that this was dropped right before the election, yada, yada. Well, the only reason that happened was because Trump's been stalling and stalling and stalling. Back to uh, PBS. Though a months-long congressional investigation and the indictment itself have chronicled in stark detail Trump's efforts to undo the election, the filing by Jack Smith cites previously unknown accounts offered by Trump's closest aides to paint a portrait of an increasingly desperate president who, while losing his grip on the White House, uses 
deceit to target every stage of the electoral process. Oh, here's the worst one. So what? The filing quotes Trump as telling an aide after being advised that his vice president, Mike Pence, was being rushed to a secure location after a crowd of violent Trump supporters stormed the U.S. Capitol on January 6, 2021 to try to prevent the counting of electoral votes. The details don't matter, Trump said when told by an advisor that a lawyer who was mounting his legal challenges wouldn't be able to prove the false allegations in court, the filing states. All right, so what I'm going to do here now is read from the document. And of course, uh, you know, I won't read the entire document because it's, I want to say, a zillion pages long. Although it's not a zillion, but it's a lot. Um, but I'm just going to read the first maybe 10 pages to give you an idea of what Jack Smith has up his sleeve. So here we go. Quote, in the United States District Court for the District of Columbia, the United States of America versus Donald J. Trump. Government's motion for immunity determinations. Quote, the defendant asserts that he is immune from prosecution for his criminal scheme to overturn the 2020 presidential election because, he claims, it entailed official conduct. Not so. Although defendant was the incumbent president during the charged conspiracies, his scheme was fundamentally a private one. Working with a team of private co-conspirators, the defendant acted as a candidate when he pursued multiple criminal means to disrupt, through fraud and deceit, the government function by which votes are collected and counted, a function in which the defendant, as president, has no official role. See, the president doesn't have an official role. Okay, I'll try to keep the comments down. In Trump versus United States, the Supreme Court held that presidents are immune from prosecution for certain official conduct, including the defendant's use of the justice system to furtherance his scheme, as was alleged in the original indictment and remanded to this court to determine whether the remaining allegations against the defendant are immunized. The answer to that question is no, writes Jack Smith's team. This motion provides a comprehensive account of the defendant's private criminal conduct, sets forth the legal framework created by Trump for resolving immunity claims, applies that framework to establish that none of the defendant's charged conduct is immunized because it either was unofficial or any presumptive immunity is rebutted and requests the relief the government seeks, which is, at bottom, this, that the court determine that the defendant must stand trial for his private crimes as would any other citizen. Go, Jack Smith, go. It goes on. Quote, this motion provides the framework for conducting the necessarily fact-bound immunity analysis required by the Supreme Court remanded order. It proceeds in four parts. Section one provides a detailed statement of the case that the government intends to prove at trial. This includes the conduct alleged in the superseding indictment, as well as other categories of evidence that the government intends to present in its case in chief. This detailed statement reflects the Supreme Court's ruling that the presidential immunity contains an evidentiary component which should be addressed at the onset of a proceeding. Section two sets forth the legal principles governing claims of presidential immunity. Section two explains that for each category of conduct that the Supreme Court has not yet addressed, this court should first determine whether it was official or unofficial by analyzing the relevant content form and context to determine whether the defendant was acting in his official capacity or instead in his capacity as a candidate for re-election, where the defendant was acting as an office seeker, not office holder, no immunity attaches. For any conduct deemed official, 
The court should next determine whether the presumption of immunity is rebutted, which requires the government to show that applying a criminal prohibition to that act would impose no danger of intrusion on the authority and functions of the executive branch. Section three then applies those legal principles, and I'm just going to boom, go down to the next section. Finally, section five explains that the relief sought by the government specifies the findings the court should make a single order, namely that the defendant's conduct set forth in section one is not immunized. And that as a result, the defendant must sit and trial on the superseding indictment. And the government is not prohibited at trial from using evidence of the conduct described in section one. So yeah, so bottom line, he wasn't president. He wasn't acting as president. He was acting as a candidate. Because as president, you just can't automatically commit these crimes to remain president. No, he was doing it as a candidate. So that's what Jack Smith is saying. And then here's the factual pro offer. So this is what was originally, this is what Trump is charged with. When the defendant lost the 2020 presidential election, he resorted to crimes to try to stay in office with private co-conspirators. The defendant launched a series of increasingly desperate plans to overturn legitimate election results in several states that he had lost. Arizona, Georgia, Michigan, Nevada, New Mexico, Pennsylvania, and Wisconsin. And those are the targeted states. His efforts included lying to state officials in order to induce them to ignore true vote counts, manufacturing fraudulent elector votes in the targeted states, attempting to enlist Vice President Michael R. Pence as his role as president of the Senate to obstruct Congress's certification of the election by using the defendant's fraudulent electoral votes. And when all else failed on January 6, 2021, directing an angry crowd of supporters to the United States Capitol to obstruct the congressional certification the through line of these efforts was deceit. The defendants and co-conspirators knowingly false claims of election fraud. They use these lies in furtherance of three conspiracies. One, to conspire to interfere with federal government function by which the nation collects and counts election results, which is set forth in the Constitution and the Electoral College Act. Two, conspiracy to obstruct the official proceeding in which Congress certifies the legitimate results of the presidential election. And three, a conspiracy against the rights of millions of Americans to vote and have their votes counted. Yes, I'm being dramatic because I thought it would be more fun this way. At its core, the defendant's scheme was a private criminal effort. In his capacity as a candidate, the defendant used deceit to target every stage of the electoral process, which through the Constitution and the Electoral College Act and state laws includes the state's notification to the federal government of the section of their representative electors based on the popular vote in the state. The meeting of those electors to cast their votes consistent with the popular vote and the Congress's counting of the electors' votes as certification proceeding. The defendant worked with private co-conspirators, including private attorneys. Okay, and now all of this is redacted as Jack Smith sets out who Trump worked with to commit these crimes. And they're covered up, they're redacted, and they're not shown because mainly... Jack Smith and the judge are trying to protect people from being targeted by Trump's, you know, cronies who do all kinds of horrible things. You know, they swat them and, you know, other things. So this is all redacted, covered up, covered up, so that none of the names are available. So you get the drift of what's going on. And um, I'll move down to page four. Publicly, the defendant began to plant the seeds 
for that false declaration that the election was stolen. Publicly, privately, the defendant told advisors, and then they cover up the names, that if there was a scenario where he would lose, he would simply declare victory before all the ballots were counted and any winner was projected. My God. Publicly, the defendant began to plant the seeds for that false declaration. And he did this months and months and months before. And then Jack Smith says, quote, in the months leading up to the election, he refused to say whether he would accept election results, insisted that he would lose the election only because of fraud. And he's doing that again. Falsely claimed that mail-in ballots were inherently fraudulent and asserted that only votes counted by election day were valid. All right, so this really is annoying to me because Trump's wife um, is out with a new book and it's full of hooey, okay? It's full of lies and ridiculous statements. But she says something like, oh, we know the election was stolen because, and I, it's a bad accent, we know the election was stolen because it takes too long for them to count the votes. They can't keep counting and counting days after the election. It's like, okay, lady, really? Really? Have you ever been in an election office? I have. Wow. Anyway, I'll go back to the document. And then he gives examples. For instance, in an interview on July 19, 2020, when asked repeatedly if he would accept the results of the election, the defendant said he would have to see. And it depends. On July 30th, despite having voted by mail himself earlier that year, the defendant suggested that widespread mail-in voting provided cause for delaying the election, tweeting, with universal mail-in voting, not absentee voting, which is good. And see, he just makes these statements. He's ridiculous. 2020 will be the most inaccurate and fraudulent election in history. It will be a great embarrassment to the USA. Delay the election until people can properly, securely, and safely vote. And then he, puts, he tweets this, question mark, question mark, question mark. In an interview on August 2nd, the defendant claimed without any basis that there is no way you can go through the mail-in vote without massive cheating. At a campaign event in Wisconsin on August 17th, the defendant told his supporters, the only way we're going to lose this election if the election is rigged. Remember that. It's the only way we're going to lose the election, so we have to be very careful. And you know, he's saying that these exact same words again. And then Jack Smith gives example after example after example of how Trump set us all up by falsely claiming the election was going to be stolen. And then there's a whole bunch of stuff about Fox News and his being on Fox News. And this document is brilliant. I'm only on like page nine and it's 165 pages. So you get the drift. It's unbelievably succinct and clear that Trump did a lot of what he did prior to the January 6th riot insurrection as a private citizen. So now Trump people, his lawyers, are going to try to respond to this, and then it'll be up to Judge Chutkin to determine what goes forward and what doesn't. And it's going to happen late at the end of the year. And so we're not, we're not seeing a trial here. And then, of course, you know, it's going to have to go back to the Supreme Court, and who knows what they're going to decide. Or they may do what they did today on the abortion ruling in Texas and just not get involved again. But who knows? Because they're slime buckets. They're slime buckets. It's another reason to vote because two of these slime buckets are planning to retire next year. And if Trump wins, he's going to appoint some more disaster Supreme Court justices. So that's just a snippet of the Jack Smith filing. I wanted to share it with you. I'm Gloria Moraga, political woman. There is a lot going on right now. I mean, unbelievable. 
Our vice president uh, planted a tree today at the vice president's residence uh, in honor of the one year anniversary of the attack by Hamas in Israel. And um, it's a pomegranate tree, which is one of the trees mentioned in the Bible. And it stands for pomegranates uh, are a symbol of love. It was just a very touching, um, a very touching event that I um, used the soundbite from, from Dougie, because uh, he's Jewish, and um, you know when you hear Trump say that Harris <laughs> does not support Jews, it's just a bigger crime than ever, because <laughs> he's so wrong on so many levels. I'm Gloria Moraga, political woman. That's a little bit of Jack Smith's filing. It's really good. And I have it on my website, GloriaMoraga.com, if you want to read it. It's great reading for late at night when you're snuggling down. <laughs> well, I enjoyed it. All right, take care. Please vote. And be safe.